Welcome back to the channel, folks. This is Shell Toucher. Uh, today we'll be looking at some really cool tips, tricks, and hacks uh, in a tactile kind of way. Um, is that creepy? That might be a little creepy. I apologize for that. Take it. And welcome back. So, as I spoke of in the intro, we have some really cool hacks today. And then uh, I did, I, thinking back now, it did come off a little creepy with the whole mind thing. I, you know, it's a mind thing. Don't, don't try to understand it. I don't understand. It doesn't really matter. Anyways, folks, bags. We're going to talk about dry bags, uh, compression bags, all the bags pretty much that you will need. And trust me, you will need them on your Camino. And there are many. Um, and there's, you know, and people often, they don't overthink this. In fact, I think they underthink it and they get their underprepared when it comes to bags. You need bags like nobody's business. I don't care what anyone tells you. You need bags to keep your stuff dry, to protect your Compostela, to protect your passport, to protect everything. Because it does rain there in Spain. It's it's true. Northern Spain is quite damp, especially when you enter Galicia. Uh, ah! No matter what time, it's damp. It's it's humid. It's you're gonna get you're gonna get wet, and you're gonna sweat a lot as well. So not only do you have to worry about the elements, you have to worry about your your body too overheating, which it will from time to time, unless you layer properly, which we'll get to in a future episode. But until then, let's talk about bags. Now the most important thing I think, anyways, when choosing a bag, aside from the color of the dry bag, well let's look at the dry bags first before because it might be some people that new to the whole concept might be hearing dry bag for the first time or even compression bag. Is this your first time hearing compression bag? That it is. Here we have some classic dry bags. And these are cheap ones too. You can get these relatively cheap on Amazon um, as well as other places, but um, super cheap on Amazon. In fact, if you need to pick some up still, please use my affiliate link below. It uh, helps support the channel and helps support my next Camino and it helps support more tips, tricks, and hacks coming your way every week. So first of all, the most basic of the compression sacks, it's nylon. Some super water resistant to the point of probably being waterproof. That's what we really want at the end of the day. Kill it, me! The best type of compression ones are the ones that you can compress without, um, where Sea to Summit is the brand for that. Um, let's see, I think it's called Event, Event Material might be the name of their nylon. And uh, it breathes so that you, even if the bag is tightened, you can still compress, compress it. This is not one of them, however. This is just a super dry bag. It will keep your stuff dry. Anyways, your basic one. Clip up top here. Super easy. Uh, you put what you want in here. See, this one is labeled night. Yeah, how ambiguous is that? Night, so this would be my nighttime clothes. Stuff I would be wearing at night. A uh, pair of like uh, shorts, maybe. Um, you know, drawstring sh shorts, um, a t-shirt. Whatever, whatever I'd be wearing at night would go in this sack. Uh, I would compress it down, roll it up, clip it, put it in my bag, and forget about it. So this is a basic, basic dry bag. Uh, here are some more basic dry bags of the same variety. And I, I'll demonstrate one with some real clothes in a second. But here's another one labeled pants. In case you were wondering, pants go in this one. Um, I would bring, you know, a, in future episodes, I'll talk about what to bring or what I brought. What you bring is up to you, really, at the end of the day, but I might have some uh, thoughts on that that you might may want to consider. Anyway, so this is my pants bag. Um, oh, no, actually, it turns to the vest bag, so you can, you can, you can change your mind. It's okay. It's, it's adulting. Um, and here is my shirts bag. So these are pretty much no brand, no name brand um, dry bags that worked great. They got the job done. Um, and what I recommend with these dry bags, before we move on to the next type of dry bag, is just a Sharpie. Pair it with a Sharpie. When you're packing for your Camino, when you're finding where, you know, what you're going to bring, when you're laying it out before you, everything that you're going to put into your backpack, have that all stacked on each bag that you've allotted to whatever that is, be it your nighttime wear, your pants, your shirts. And then with a Sharpie, after, the, after you've loaded them in there and see that they fit snug in there and compressed down, um, nice and snug rather, label it. 
with a Sharpie. You may want to take the clothes out before you label it, however, because these this might bleed into the bag and get on your clothes. I don't think it will, uh, being that it's waterproof, which I typically think means it's nylon, often ripped up with a polyurethane coating. So you think that would prevent this from bleeding through. However, don't take a chance. So that's my first tip, if you didn't catch that. So Sharpie, label everything. Cheap dry bags work fine. Then you have these other type of dry bags. They're zipper ones. This is by Hopeville. That's inspiring. Um, these I typically use for food, food items, snacks and whatnot. Uh, you know, again, I'll be covering like food bags specifically in future episodes, but you know, when you move from town to town, you pick up things along the way and rather than leave them behind, like you'll buy a whole thing of oregano maybe or something to cook with if you're cooking and you, you feel bad leaving that behind. Maybe you want to take that with you. I don't recommend taking a huge jar of oregano with you, but we'll talk about, we'll cover some tips in, in regards to that in the future. But this is what I would store it in. Something with a zipper, preferably waterproof zipper, just to keep the scent in there and keep everything in there, all the food stuff in in there so it doesn't get all over your bag. Uh, and even inside here, if you want to put another Ziploc, let's put that in another Ziploc inside the food bag. And here's another example of a food bag. It's a little bit thicker, nylon, um, but yeah, I highly recommend zipper bags for your food. And plus, you know the difference. It's easy to get confused looking at all your bags. Um, what is what? But if you know there's a zipper, if you can feel the zipper when you're rummaging through there, you know it's probably your feed bag. Um, my overnight bag or my dop kit. This is by Osprey. It's awesome. It's probably one of the best dop kits out there. I will cover this specifically in a future episode on, you know, dop kit, what to carry for your bathroom items. But rip stop, I've used this on two Camino so far, and it's still kicking. Can I say that? Kicking ass? Yeah, it's still kicking butt. So those are your basic dry bags. Now we get into C to Summit. And this one, again, you can see I, I've labeled this on underwear. This one is definitely waterproof. However, what I will say, before you take anything with you, before you lean for your trip, triple check, if especially if you're using C to Summit bags, the hardware on here, the clips. These are on here, they're bolted on here. There's a screw on one side, it bolts into the other side. So these, this can come off. You can take this off and you can replace them. That being said, the more you use these, or whatever, you know, just everyday life, wear and tear, sh shakes that bolt sometimes out of there. When I... That is right. When I got to Spain within the first week, I realized I lost a bolt here and rendered this useless. So I had no clip. <laughs> See, the Summit does sell replacement clips, so they're aware of this. And I get it if you want, if you, know, if you have the bag and this breaks, so that you can replace it, that's really cool. Uh, you don't get that with a cheaper bag. So again, it, you know, it's, it, it pays to invest in quality, I suspect. They're also coated to be waterproof up here. They're just, a, they're just a higher quality bag. But again, make sure you inspect it first. Make sure that screw is tight in there. You just need an eyeglass, eyeglasses uh, screwdriver to tighten that up or a small screwdriver. Make sure those are tight, snug, not over tight because it's plastic, but tight and snug before your trip. And so, yeah. Cedar Summit. Again, I think I have affiliate links below for that, or at least an Amazon link. Please consider using that. Uh, what other types of bags do I have? Oh, yeah, here's another food bag. This one is by Osprey. It's not, you know, it's not sold as a food bag. It's what I've turned it into. It has a little clip on it, so if I wanted to, you know, if I was hiking out in the, the, you know, the Appalachian Trail and whatnot, I wanted to hang it up a tree, or whatever, hang it off my pack, strap it to the back of my pack. It doesn't necessarily be, need to be used for food. But again, it's for carrying like, you know, just stuff from town to town, just the basics I picked up, maybe snacks, uh, little packets of, you know, I even have sponges. You wet this and absorbs and turns into a, a sponge. Little tiny salt and pepper shaker, don't ask. I'll talk about this in a future episode, but again, it's nice to have a different type of pack for your food. Easy to identify real quick and you can pull it out and if it's a zipper, you don't have to worry about breaking anything or, or breaking into the pack. And then we get to regular, regular bags. This isn't even a Ziploc bag. This is something I just picked up. Let's see, is it in Spanish? This is something I just picked up along the way on the trail because you run out of bags. You need bags for things. It's, it's amazing how badly you need the bags. And you know, here comes another tip. Tip number two. If this is tip number two, is there any good? Was that food bag might've been tip number two. Tip number three, <laughs> plastic bags. This is a real hack. If you find yourself in a pinch and you need a bag for I, whatever, whatever the case may be, Sanitary bags, guys. Oh, you don't know what that is? 
I'm not going to explain what that is, but you can find sanitary bags along the way. And I know it's you shouldn't be taking sanitary if people need them too. But in a pinch, and you will find yourself in a pinch, those work just as well. And you'll see them on offer in most bathrooms that you use. So you can grab those, at least one, and uh, use it to keep the toilet paper in, to keep stuff dry. Um, but again, save bags, any bags you can find along the way. You know, and that said, this is going to kind of bleed into my... Um, um, bathroom episode that'll be coming up but toilet paper along the way to oftentimes you know in spain this isn't unique to spain either essential south america have run into this problem as well where you'll get to the bathroom and before you know it you're done and there's no toilet paper for whatever reason and that you need it for or for whatever reason that it's not there there's no toilet paper there so remember to pick some up along the way and it doesn't necessarily need to be toilet paper if you're at a cafe and whatnot if you see napkins maybe grab a couple but throw them in a ziploc bag and put them in your back pocket thank me later other, you know, forms of Ziplocs are actual Ziplocs. This is actually a green bag, so this is biodegradable. But this fits your Pilgrim Passport as well as your regular passport. And this is something I used, kept very close to me. I kept in my sling bag right here. Because this is the first thing you need when you get to town or when you uh, pass a cafe with a stamp. You have everything you need right here. You have your Pilgrim's Passport with that out right there. Stamp, stamp it. Or if you're checking into a hostel or whatnot, you have your passport right here too. Everything you need right here. It also protects it from pickpockers and everything else having it very close to you and protected like this. Why is it protected like this? Body sweat. You can bleed through whatever you're wearing. Oh, sweat through. I don't want to keep using the term bleed through. But sweat through. Uh, and that can dampen everything you have on you, including your Pilgrim's Passport. And that will... Okay, we're back to bleeding. The ink on the stamps will bleed. And then again, if it rains, uh, you run into the same problem. So you want to protect your Pilgrim's Passport so by the time you get to Santiago, you have proof. And it also will fall apart. I had a good friend of mine, she didn't protect hers as well as she should have. She didn't keep it in a Ziploc. And by the time she got to Santiago, it was all taped together. The it, colors, it was like mixing Play-Doh together. It was just like colors everywhere. It was very abstract, in fact. And I think uh, Picasso would have appreciated it. But the people to peel them off and... A Pilgrim office didn't necessarily appreciate it. It doesn't matter. I'm stumbling on my words right now. So Ziploc, very important. Bring some with you or find some there. I had one of these. I don't know if it was one of these. It was a Ziploc though. And along the way, I opened it so much the seam, something was breaking on it. Like one side of the bag was, 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 it was, it was there was a tear in it. And so I had to remember the, the word for scotch tape or cell, cell, cellophane, cellophane tape, whatever they call it. Scotch tape is what we call it here. Um, cinta. So if you find yourself in a pinch and you need tape, cinta, C-I-N-T-A. Anyways, I managed to tape my bag and kept going. Okay, we have some more dry bags here. These are what I was speaking of earlier. Uh, these are lightweight dry bags by Sea to Summit. Awesome. These are 1.5 liters. Yes, that's another thing I should bring up. These are often, they're always, in fact, um, uh, listed in liters. So 1.5 liters is a really small bag, but it's great for small things too. I mean, if that wasn't obvious. And bigger ones are great for big things. It's true. Here's another 1.5. I pick up the one liters and 1.5 when I see them because they're they're really hard to find sometimes. Smaller bags, and yeah. And then here's a lightweight five liter sack. Uh, this is a drawstring sack, waterproof, really great, and you know, really good for hiding a rain. If your rain jacket that you're bringing with you or a poncho isn't packable or folds in on itself into a pocket and zips up, you can always pack it into something like this and compress it down and stow it away in your bag. But yeah, this is like a classic drawstring on your back, uh, your, I'm sorry, your sleeping bag as well. If it doesn't have its own sack or it doesn't compress down small enough, you can use this. I'll be speaking of sleeping bags in a future episode. Personally, you probably don't need a bag at all. It's probably faster not to use a sleeping bag bag. Just stick it in the bottom of your pack and put everything on top of it. But we'll cover that in a future episode. Now, this is this is the tip I really wanted to get to. This is so this came to me on my first Camino. I was, you know, at night you're in the hostels, you're there's fifty people sleeping at the lights are off, it's after ten o'clock, and you need something. You need aspirin or uh, Camino candy, ibuprofen. Um, but you don't want to turn on a light to find it. So you're reaching around in your bat hopefully if you're on the bottom bunk, uh, you're reaching around through your backpack trying to find your first aid kit and all, everything feels the same. You've made the mistake of buying all the same types of dry bags for everything that you own. That's okay if, if you, it's daytime and you're looking, they're all different colors and you can identify them. But in the dark, 
I recommend different textured bags for different items, especially a first aid kit. You wanna be able to find that no matter what, even in the dark, and that's what we have here. So here is a fine example of a first aid kit. This, my friends, is waterproof. It's a waterproof first aid kit. It's one of my favorites. It has a totally different feel than the nylon. It's got a texture to it. So not only is it bright red and white, like anyone who speaks any language will identify this thanks to the cross and the color as a first aid kit. So that's great. So, I mean, if you're hurt and you're telling someone to find your first aid kit, they can find this no matter what language they speak. As long as they understood that you're hurt and asking for a first aid kit. But aside from that, at night, if you're looking in the dark, you can feel that this is your first aid kit due to the texture of it. So keep that in mind. Different items and different bags should have different textures. There's, this is for sunglasses, but it's one of those microfiber, like almost felt feeling. You can use this for something important or whatever. Glasses or whatever. Just so you know, when you're feeling in that bag, again, here's another one. This is a mesh bag. This would be for something that maybe needs to dry. That you didn't get a chance to dry uh, during your time at a hostel. So now you're hiking, you can dangle it off your bag. And since it's almost fishnet, it breathes and allows for evaporation and so on and so forth. Uh, bags like that are great. So collect bags as you're waiting to, or prepping for your Camino. Here's another one, totally different feel. Drawstring, it's not waterproof, but it is an option. Here's a, another bag. This bag is actually for soap, but you, it feels different. It has a different feel to it. it even makes a noise. Uh, another ripstop, nylon ripstop, but it's a thicker one, so it has a different feel to it. Here's a waterproof drawstring. Another one, different feel to it. This could hold socks or whatever you're reaching for at night. Here's a cloth one. I've got this in Peru, I believe, that I've used, actually, I think I have a couple of these. Yeah, here's another one. This I used for a first aid kit on my first community, and it feels totally different. It's, it has that, it's not nylon, it's like embroidery thread, colored embroidery. So it has a totally different texture. It is, I believe, cotton though, so not the best thing for a first aid kit, but I think you get the gist of what I'm saying is think, consider texture. This is, and the only reason why it came to me is because that predicament I've been describing, or that scenario about looking for ibuprofen, that happened a lot. And uh, I needed to identify where it was in my pack real quick in the dark with my hands. Here's another one. This one's pretty cool. This is made out of like re recycled materials. It has a pink dinosaur on it. So, I mean, there's that. But it also has a, a different feel to it. It's a zipper and it's a wide zipper too. So just, again, tactile information. That is the biggest, what I think is the biggest takeaway is that. And then let's look at some other bags here. Oh, here's another one. And now we have the scrubba. This may have been invented in Boston. I don't know, but it is called the scrubba. And this is a really neat dry bag. I, you can totally see how this was invented. This is completely waterproof. It is from Australia and you fill it up with hot water and there are little, you pull inside out, there's little like scuffers in here. Not even scuffers, it's a little, in this texture here. Uh, agitators, I guess you would call them. And you would put water in here, soap, hot water, cool, I don't know, whatever Whatever you're washing. If it's wool, you probably don't want to use hot water, but whatever. Uh, water, soap, dirty clothes. Then you would roll it down. You don't want to compress it. You want to keep the air in there. So roll it down and then clip it. And you shake this, you step on it. You can bring this in the shower with you to kill two birds with one stone. So while you're showering, you can be stepping on this and washing clothes with your feet because people do that. However, you don't really need this. I brought this on my first Camino and I probably mailed it home within the first week because it was just extra weight and you can just wash your stuff in the sink. And again, in future episodes, I'll be co probably covering a little bit more of this, but definitely covering on how to wash your clothes efficiently, quickly, and without much thought. Uh, again, future episode, we'll cover that. Uh, but yeah, so you will see this talked about in different forums and groups, different hiking groups especially, like on the Appalachian Trail, you could use this. You know, you don't have access to a sink often. You have access to water, however, but not a sink. So, but if you're waiting, to, you know, I mean, if, so yeah, if you're stuck in the middle of nowhere, this would come in handy if you're willing to carry the extra weight. It doesn't weigh a whole lot. And I think this is the smaller version of the wash bag. This might be the large one, actually. I'm not sure, but totally don't need this in the Camino. But hey, you know, if you're a heavyweight hiker, this might be something you might want to drag around with you. We have the compression bag. This is the true compression bag. Uh, this is by Kodora. Oh, no, the fabric is Kodora. This is by... This might be Sea to Summit as well. And this is something I would use for my sleeping bag. 
I, you know, my first Camino, I wanted to compress everything. This is also a pain in the butt, though, to put your sleeping bag in every day. But whatever. You don't have to use your sleeping bag. You can use it for any set of clothing. And what you would do is stuff it with whatever you want. Probably not your camera, but like, you know, clothing, material, stuff. And uh, then you cinch the drawstring. And this cap folds over on top. And there's straps on the side. And you can press it down. And if this is Cedar Summit, which it might be... I don't know what it is. Uh, it breathes really well, like meaning air comes out. Like you don't have to compress it yourself. As you're tightening this, the air comes out and it stays out. It doesn't expand back. It's a really good quality bag. I don't know if this is one in fact though, but it is a compression bag. So this would bring you guys sleeping bag to about the size of a fist. It really was, it was awesome. So, but again, at the end of the day, I don't even think you need this for a sleeping bag. You could use this for something else, though. Maybe a rain jacket. If you are bringing a regular size rain jacket, um, that's super waterproof. And sometimes that's worth carrying. You still might want to compress it down. And that wouldn't be bad to put back in here every now and then. You know, if it doesn't rain every day. <laughs> uh, but yeah, compression bag. Uh, then... I don't even know. Are we, at tip? Are we doing tips anymore? Or am I just giving advice at this point? And is that not the same? Is that not the same? It might be the same. Anyways, this, my friends, is a pack liner. This is a 50 to 70 liter pack liner by Osprey. I will have a link for this down below too. This is kind of cool. Again, if you're doing like the Appalachian Trail or a, a serious trail where you're out in the woods for a while and you want to keep everything dry, you can totally bypass using all the dry bags and just use this liner. And this is what you would put. I'll cover this in the future episode too with a backpack. But you would put this in the backpack, open the backpack, slide this in there, roll it up over the sides and just throw everything in the backpack, uh, compress it down, cinch this, and then close your backpack and that's it. So you don't need to use rain cover anymore on your backpack. I mean, granted, rain cover is way like, you know, an ounce. But there's some super ultra light hikers out there that for some reason or another they think that and maybe they don't. Who am I to judge? That d does away with needing a rain cover and your stuff stays dry. My problem with these, however, and you can, actually, here's a hack for you. Um, my problem with these is if you have a bottom zip backpack, meaning like you can open from the top and there's also a zipper on the bottom or the side of your backpack, which are awesome and I highly recommend. It just makes accessing stuff so much easier, especially when you get to the, uh, get to the hostel at the end of the day. Like my sleeping bag and rain jacket lives on the bottom of my backpack. So being able to get it real quick with that bottom zipper is awesome however if you're using one of these you can't get at it in the bottom so you could either put your you know smush your sleeping bag down there and then put this on top of it the entire liner on top of that and risk it getting wet if it rains or if you're good with um, a sewing machine or if you have a seamstress maybe put a zipper on the bottom of this bag so you can access it too does that make sense if it doesn't make sense Tell me it doesn't make sense in the comments below. In fact, comment below. Um, because, yeah, that's my super hack. I haven't, I've yet to do it. That's why I haven't taken this out of the pack yet. But that's what I'm going to do on my next one, I believe. Anyways, uh, and now we have uh, another bag. This is another fishnet style bag. And I have my foot care stuff in here. I have recovery socks. Yes, that's a thing. And we'll talk about that in a future episode too. And I have other like foot care and recovery items in here as well. But this is something I can hang on the back of my bag and it'll dry out. Or sandals too. I would keep my sandals in here on the back of my backpack and it breathes throughout the course of the day. So if the sandals were sweaty or whatnot, they're gonna be breathing while I'm hiking. So yeah, think about that too when it comes to bag. And again, texture. I can tell you in the dark that this is my fishnet bag. Oof. Okay, next we have, well, this is called the Air Porter Small. Actually, it's called the Air Porter. This is the small bag. And this is actually a bag for your backpack or a bag for your bag. And it's super heavy. <laughs> I mean, it's not super heavy, but I mean, ultra light hikers would not want to carry this with them. But this is if you choose to not carry on your backpack and check your bag. This goes over your backpack and it protects it. it protects all the little buckles and everything else on your backpack from getting torn off. Cause that's happened to me before too. My chest clips. Uh, flying somewhere internationally one time. When I finally found my bag, because it was also lost, the clip was gone. 
I'll be covering that in a future episode as well. But this protects your bag. And then when you're, you get wherever you're going, you can fold this up in on itself. It's packable. And you can put this at the bottom of your bag and forget about it. Or when you get to Spain, send this ahead to Santiago and it'll be waiting for you at the post office when you get there and you can repack your bag and send it back protected if you check your bag. Or you could always just send it home and wing it on the way back or just carry your bag on the plane. I don't know. Follow your heart. I don't want to tell you how to live your life. Really cool by Osprey. And, you know, here's the poor man's version of that. It's a laundry bag. So this is something that you you don't have to send ahead to Santiago. You could actually forget all of You could just leave this at the airport or give it to somebody or donate it. But this is just a good old-fashioned laundry bag. It's nylon, but you can put your backpack in this, cinch it up, um, tie it so it stays in place, and then check your bag. And this will protect your backpack as well. The difference between this and the Osprey is it's light and it's thin material. Thick enough to protect your backpack, but it rolls up like this and you could put leave this in the bottom of your backpack. It, it really weighs nothing. You know, it can tie it up on itself. So that's another quick tip, trick and hack that uh, you could use a laundry bag to protect your backpack. As promised, let me demonstrate how to pack a very basic dry bag. This is pants. However, I'm not gonna take these off. You don't even know if I'm wearing pants or not. That's the best part of this channel. But I do have a stack of underwear here. It's clean, I promise. And I'll stick that in here. You know, that said, that's another thing to keep in mind. Bring an empty dry bag for dirty clothes. Don't start off with dirty clothes, that's just weird. But you will use it. Because sometimes you can't wash your stuff every day. And it's not because you couldn't wash your stuff every day. It's just sometimes it's raining and it doesn't dry. So you don't have a chance to. So bring that for stinky stuff. Um, maybe a waterproof one. So yeah, I just stick the clothes in there. And then compress the bag. Now I compress this like this or on my lap. But I want you to see it. So I don't typically, you know, raise my arms to the sky and compress bags. Though maybe I'll start. But yes, yeah, so compress the bag down. And then, when, once that's compressed, you roll this, roll the top down. Now, I could have done a better job, you know, and this is a, a better bag. So, with stuff in it and with this rolled down, I can still compress it even more. But see how small that gets? And I can keep going and then clip it. And that's about 20 pairs of dirty, <clears throat> clean underwear. Yeah, so all your dry bags will look like this in your backpack and once more we'll cover this in a future episode how to pack a backpack yada 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 but dry bags live it love it learn it buen camino already that's it folks please if you enjoyed this video and you got something out of it please like it please in fact if you're watching this on your smart tv right now stop hit pause i'll wait pick up your phone it's right next to you i know it's in your pocket or it's right it's probably in your hand that thing Find the channel, find this video right now. The title is right here. If you've paused the video by now, I don't know why I'm still talking, but if you have, you know, that's, it says the name of this video. Find that, subscribe first, that would help also. And like the video, <laughs> but more importantly, please comment, because I know I'm for, I've forgotten something. So if you have your own tips, tricks, or other suggestions, leave them in the comments below, or just say hi. I will answer each one as I can, and I will. I will definitely get to all of them. And I'm definitely interested in learning what I didn't mention here. If I, again, if I've forgotten something or if there's something I don't know, I would appreciate a, a tip coming back. To, you put tips out, tips come back. Is that how tips work? Tips. Like they even understand that concept in Europe. Do you know tip stands for to ensure promptness? Okay, now I've totally digressed. Anyways, folks, thanks for chiming in. No, you didn't chime in. You could chime in, however. Back to comments below. I've had way too many cups of coffee today. That's what this all comes down to. Thank you, folks, for watching. Until next time. Buen Camino.